So hello, and uh, I'm going to discuss you today how to model with tabs and more importantly, how to interpret the res results, right? So I'll go with this uh, tabs. So basically, ETAPS and SAP 2000, all the things are same uh, under the same product, right? CSI computer structures. So if you know SAP 2000, that means you automatically know ETAPS, right? So basically, ETAPS is a design software, right? So there are plenty of design options which we which we cannot be seen here, which cannot be seen in SAP 2000. And uh, this is basically for buildings. So building slabs that we can use this okay so uh, uh, here i'll uh, i'll go with the new model okay just like we did in sap new model so i'll use the uh, inbuilt settings so i'll go with matrix uh, see let's still these are not important at this stage because we are not going for a design if you can if you are going for a design you can even check the section database and the design code everything okay so even euro code everything is there appropriate for bs i choose okay so if you want you can change but we don't need for this for this moment so similar to uh, uh, sap 2000 startup so you can see if you are that's generally for uh free uh frame type uh, configuration, okay? So number of grids uh, in X direction, I'll say, uh, I'll say it is uh, six, okay? Number of Y and uh, spacing in grid direction, I'll say one and one. Number of stories, I would say uh, four. Uh, yeah, four stories is enough. So and uh, even even one story is just enough. So so the typical story height, uh, let's say three meters. That's okay. Bottom story height you can give it separately. That's okay. So I need only grid. I need grid only. I'm going to draw it. Number of stories I'll make that uh, uh, not three, two stories just fine for me. Right. So, it's still loading. Yes, now it's okay. And uh, you can see that this one. Did I make something wrong? I think let's say, let's check the uh, grid data. Yeah, I think I haven't uh, changed this. Uh, one, two, like this. So now it's okay. I think I I have forgot to uh, add that uh, one meet uh, three meters. I have made it three meters. I think so. Now it's okay. I think yeah. Okay, so you can see the bottom story is one by one grid, and then this is the uh, if you rotate, this is the first story, 
and the second store, right? So I'll start dropping in uh, first. Uh, so I'll, I can select plan view. So if you want, you can select story one, story two, or base. Okay, I'll choose the base. Not base, I'll, I'll choose story one. Okay. So now you are in, you are in uh, the mid, middle, uh, middle plane, okay? So in this, this one, okay? It's the first story. If you are in the base, that's the base. So similar to SAP 2000, I can draw something like this. Uh, when, when you uh, uh, keep the cursor here, so it starts something to draw, right? So it's showing something to which can which you can draw, right? So I'll click there and still I'm clicking so it shows the angle and everything, right? So we, this is very advanced uh, tool compared to SAP, right? So, uh, so I'll, I'll start drawing like this frame element. You can see the same thing is uh, showing in isometric view. In the second uh, second panel okay three i'm clicking it there clicking it click it uh, click it click 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 and click then if you want to stop you can right click right uh, again you can start drawing left click at the node left click left click then stop right click again left click click left click click right click left click left click left click then right click okay so uh, uh I'll show you how to, uh, yeah, it's better. I think I keep the story height as also one meters. Story height meters. It's also one meters. It's okay now. So, Yes. Okay. So it has been changed. Stofian is here. So uh, let's say you need to, so this is your, let's say uh, your slab or whatever you are going to draw it. So I'll draw something here. I'll draw a rectangular slab element. Click it, click it, click it. Yeah. So this is how you can draw it. So you click it and drag it until this position and place it, then it's done. We can drag it to this version and it's done. So if you want, you can even draw, it's like coordinates. You can click it here, click it here, click it here, and click it, then press enter. Okay. Press enter and uh, uh, it starts so showing so uh, one thing is now let's say you need to draw the columns uh, towards the base okay so how we are going to do it this is you select the location you need to draw the columns right this is the node this is the node you need to place the columns columns here Okay, so can you see, can you see this? Uh, so, 
all the things selected. So, so you need to extrude the column. So we call it extruding. So we go to edit and extrude, extrude. So we are extruding joints to frames. From joints, we are uh, extruding the frame element. Right? Extrude frames. So we are in the linear system, not radial. We are in linear extension. So we need it's in z direction. Z direction minus one, right? Minus one. Not here. Not in the other direction. We we only need one time, right? Else it will go is extruding number of times, right? So we can extrude one time. It's negative one because the dot height is negative one, right? Okay. So we we can extend up to that. You can see it's already. So don't be uh, don't be worried on this uh, section type. You we can change it. It's because it's showing as I section. I'll show you why is that. Display options. Think uh, frames. Yeah, that's why. It's showing the I. It's showing it as I section. So probably you can change that material properties. Uh, so I'll just like this app. If you if you want, you can uh, define a material, the copy of material. So concrete isotropic density is I'll say twenty five. Okay. So I don't I don't need to change those material. Okay. Right. Okay. I can define then a section. Right. Frame section. There are several sections. Okay. Everything is there. Steel design database is there. Right. So this is very comprehensive uh, software. Add new property. So concrete, you need concrete, right? So uh, you can check the, uh, let's say 200 millimeters and 200 millimeters. Let's say 100. Okay. So the material is max. Everything is fine, and uh, you can check OK. Right. So you can just like this app, you can select all. So you can see what's all selected. Don't worry if you assign something to frame element, it won't get assigned to uh, nothing will happen to a area element. That means okay, so you can assign. So once you define it, you have to assign it. So check whether this is, I think, FVSE, right? I don't remember the name. Yeah, no, it's okay, right? And if you want, you can extrude it now. It's not applied. Mm. Yeah, I think it's already applied, right? So, section properties, let's check. Is it the one we defined? Modify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the one we defined. Okay, so, now it's done. Okay, so I'll, I'll set this. Uh, Load patterns uh, set the dead weight as zero, so I don't need that. Okay, so I have now defined everything. And if you need, if you need, you can copy this. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll add some loading. So I, I'm going to, so this is uh, area element. So I'll go to mesh this one because. Uh, if you have more number of uh, element, it will uh, give you some accurate results. Otherwise, uh, it will only be connecting at these nodes. So when you mesh it, more number of finite elements captured it in this, right? So you this gives you an auto meshing option. 
let's say a yeah, rectangle of auto mesh so i can so this is one meters so i can approximately mesh it 0.1 meters right so i think it is is meshed so close 0.1 Applied. Not sure it is applied. I think it has to be when the results are uh, showing. Let's see. Edit. Edit shells. Even if you want, you can divide it from this one. Uh, let's say divide quadrilaterals. Uh, 10 by 10 mesh yeah now it's done right so you can see it's divided so that means it is connected at each node right so now meshing means now more number of finite elements are the finite points are there in this space to calculate your answer that means accuracy will be converging right so uh, i'll uh, I'll add some load to here. Okay. Assign force. So force is now in global direction. So I'll start one kilonewton in the global uh, uh, set direction. So it's negative one. Okay, so now it's okay. So I can uh, select all of these and then assign shell load, right? So totally for all shells, right? So uniform, uniform shell load. So that will be, I'll, I'll say one kilo, 0.5 kilonewtons per meter squared, okay? So 0.2, right? It's gravity direction is okay, then gravity. Gravity means global minus the set direction, okay? So whatever it plays in dead, the load type is dead. So you can see 0.2 uh, meters per squared is added on each uh, element, right? I think it's uh, this element has not been selected. You have to add that. Sign so shell load uniform 0.2. That's okay, right? Now it's done. So. I'll uh, assign this frame frame a load. So this is how we have. So, so if it is a frame, we go to frame load and assigning, right? So if you can assign a point load. So I'll say a uh, not gravity direction this time. I will apply it in uh, uh, global, not global x direction. I can't see what is x direction. Yeah, I will apply it in, this is anyway in X direction. So X direction means the axial global X. So I'll uh, assign this in uh, Y direction. Okay. So global Y, global Y is in this, this way. So I'll apply, so this gives you the relative distance from the end, it's 0.5. So one kilonewton I will add in the negative direction. Okay. So everything okay. Yes. For this element, I will apply a frame load uh, in a global sorry gravity direction. Then it's anyway one gravity means minus Z, right? So I have applied it at 0.25. Okay, 0.25 distance. For this for these elements, I will apply a frame load distributed. Then uh, that's a uniform load. Uh, 0.5 kilonewtons per meter. Then you don't need to edit any of these. It's uh, gravity direction. That's okay, right? So if you want to edit in uh, 
the other way, let's say this member. So you not you not you need to edit in horizontal direction. Right. So this this frame member is a uh, y direction is the axial uh, direction of this member, right? It's a frame load distributed. So you need to add it in global x direction. It's also positive. So it's adding. We are, where we are adding, right? So everything is done. So now you can go ahead and sorry, I think we did not define any section properties for slab section, right? So I'll copy this slab with my material slab 2 right slab 2 so thickness will be let's say 100 meters 100 millimeters okay so it's a shell thin okay so let's say this okay so i can uh Select everything and assign the shell section, slab section, slab two. Okay. So now everything is assigned and the load is also there. You don't need to worry. Uh, load assigns, you can see shell loading there. If you need to see frame loading, so you can, frame loading is everything there. So, uh, uh, you can see the basis pin, right? It automatically assign the pin conditions once you extrude it to base, right? When there's base, VTEPS is automatically taking that. If you want, uh, no, yeah, we, we, we'll go ahead and analyze this one. So we have already uh, defined coordinate system and then uh, let's say, So uh, please uh, check this local coordinate system. I think it's there. You can show that elements local coordinate. Is it there? Frames local axis. You can. So you can see uh, the red axis is always the axial, right? First axis. Uh, the second axis is the green axis and the third axis is the blue axis right uh, you can see the red arrow is showing always where you, from the first node to second node where you draw it right so if you draw it from here, this node to this node so red will indicate this as your direction right accordingly it will give you two perpendicular orthogonal uh, second direction and third direction. So this is important when you are select uh, displaying frame forces, right? So you can see now everything is there, right? So if you need to see, let's, let's say, so if you need, even you can, uh, we will go with shell elements later. So we'll, Go and analyze this. This local. So let's say something. Say with. Right. So you can see the displacement is or displacement are shown. So you can go ahead and just like this app. You can see uh, even you can there's option for frame shells separately. They have separated shells and frames. So from this one you can see. So you know uh, the axial loading, right? For so our load case is dead, right? So you can see the axial force, right? This is the axial load. If you right click it, just like this app, it will show. The axial loading and the torsion or whatever right so axial loading is the first axis right so if a if a column is giving the axial loading the first direction right so if you know if you need to know 
right let's let's see again the, uh, the local axis right so you remember 2 2 means uh, shear along uh, second direction right so you can see shear along second direction right did you remember that where was the loading let's see again so shear along second direction we, we, you should uh, see this with loading right so you can see uh, we have added the load in second direction right so that should give shear in second direction as well so m uh, m22 means moments above the second direction right for instance you can take this member right if you add load like this it will bend this beam around this blue axis it will bend this beam around the third axis it's just like the things you solve right 2d beam and frames because you are not having 3d frames for your structural analysis manually so you don't have out of plane forces right so if you have some forces like this out of plane forces so this will generate shear in 3 3 right it's in third direction so probably this will give you a shear diagram in 3 3 direction right but it won't give you shear in 2 2 direction right right so if they are uh, uh, and uh, this beam is now bending about so if you if you uh, bend apply a point like it will bend like this about second axis it will give you m22 but it's not bending about third axis right so to bend it third bend it about third axis you should give some loading vertically right that's how you interpret the result right so let's check uh, the values so you have m22 and here vertical horizontal right so here m22 can you see m22 is here right so it probably give you some considerable value right m22 due to the complex behavior you can expect some little values but major values are from the external loads right so you can see m22 probably this will give you a very negligible value uh, due to the complex behavior m4 m33 say yeah can you see it's zero right almost zero because the load is acting in uh, the second direction right not second direction third direction right so it is bending about second direction right so if you see shear 2 2 it is related to moment 3 3 because shear 2 2 means load is in two second axis along second axis and it's bending about third axis shear 3 3 means load is in third axis along third axis and it's bending about second axis right so that's how you take it right so it's very simple right so you can see this so you can see the bend shear 2 2 it, that's why shear 2 and moment 3 it's given this couple then if shear 3 then moment 2 right that's how you take it the deflection is also provided right so that's how you interpret the result so if you take a column right so check the uh, check the local axis before you analyze it so you can see the second axis is this right second axis is this so the bending about the second axis right so bending about the second axis will be like this and bending about the third axis will be like this bending will be third axis like this right so you can check the uh, bending right so it has some you know, uh, smaller values in bending right so as well as let's check moment two two 
So you can see it has a considerable value moment two to it. So that means uh, it's bended about this that about that axis, right? It's about uh, so it's bended about second axis, right? So this is how you uh, you should know how to interpret the results, right? Otherwise, it's a time, waste of time. Anybody can model this, but you are the one who going to interpret the results, right? So this is how you interpret the frame results. So if you want, you can check the displays. So frame results are shown in local axis because frames with respect to the local axis of frame, but uh, the uh, uh, reactions at the supports at the base will give you about the, uh, if you want, you can check the moments as well. Let's check. Yeah, moments are zero because pin support. So you can check the results. So it's given in global X direction, right? At the supports, the forces given in global direction, right? Global X is at Y, X, Y, Z, right? So if you want to check the, uh, let's say, deformed shape, right? If you want to check deflected shape, you can see the deflected shape, right? So, you know, at the space frame, uh, uh, you have six degrees of freedom and it shows the rotation and everything in the X direction. So, for instance, displacement, you, you can check the units. Uh, it says uh, the, it says, that's the displacement. Trans, sorry, not the translation. Yeah, translation and displacement. Uh, under so absolute distance structure area. Yeah, so like as you can see, there's something called translation displacement that's given in millimeters, right? So it will give you how much this will. So you have 0.2 millimeters in negative y direction, 0 0.06 millimeters in x direction, and the radius in rotations, right? So this location will have 0.1 millimeters in uh, x direction, 0 0.013 in negative y direction, right? So, and we had we had some uniform loading in this lab, right? So probably that will have some deflection in z direction. We'll check. So you can see, not considerable, but it will have some deflection because the loading is not uh, heavy. I think that's why. So in this point, you have some concentrated loading rather than that point loading. So you have usage of minus 0 0.15. The loading is increased. Probably this uh, usage will increase, right? And uh, you can check the shell stressors, right? F11, right? F11. So you can see it's like this, right? So F11, it's basically zero, right? You can see. So it's zero. If you check uh, F22, it's also zero. And F12, it's again zero. So I need to check the bending moments, right? So I'll go with. So you can see there's a bending moment of. So before that, you, you should take the local axis of uh, area elements as well. Otherwise, you don't know how to interpret those results, right? So shell elements, local axis. So you can see red axis is first. This one is second. M1 is second. Uh, third axis is this, right? So M11 means the bending moment about this axis. M22 means bending moment about this axis. M33 is on the perpendicular axis, right? M3 is not defined because this shell element can build bending like two way or one way, right? So you can uh, go ahead and check the results, right? So 
let's check uh, uh, f11 means the force in uh, first direction right so that's given in uh, kilonewtons per meter right i think it's a force per unit length right m22 probably that will have some value as well it's about those bending so if you if you increase this load probably it will have some considerable value let's check yes before that i'll before that i'll show you how to uh, read that result uh, let me go with this one so you can see so for shell elements they have given first axis second axis third axis so first is red second is green and third is blue axis right so i think you can read this force distributor label in this one a final force element nodes graphical problem and blah, uh, the element internal forces like stressors they are present in all mid surface of the shell element right they are given at the mid surface and uh, probably you can see v23 that's the component in um, uh, this this direction v13 and uh, f11 is uh, related to the force on first direction f22 in force in this direction right so next they, they have given everything right so you can read this uh, it, it's just type uh, sap 2000 uh, shell element uh, output or something like that that we, that will give you this window right right so and the bending moments as well so axis one so you know if you if you if you apply some loading so you and one one will be like that and uh, so this is a bit tricky actually so this is not uh, about the uh, one one axis because this uh, it's not like the frames okay so let's say this is one one right so that's going to be uh, okay so I'll I'll draw it I'll draw it let's say this is the first axis. This is the second axis. This is the plane. So the M11 means moment like this. So if you if you see it from the side view, so this is the first axis. You can't see it. The second axis, it's into the paper. So M11 means this, right? So F22 is like this. So if you check this plane, right so this is the second axis m22 is like this right it's not like the frame not like in the frames okay please keep in mind so it's uh, again uh, one way and two way right right so if, if a slab is there right so you know how it's going to bend it's like this and it's like this right so this is about this axis so let's say it is one so m11 will be given by this pending and this is let's say second axis m22 is given this this pending right so we can check that as well so let's say this so you can see this uh, let's call it m11 so i don't remember exactly which was the first axis so that's giving the bending moment right let's right click on this let's give in the value right kilonewtons per uh, kilonewton meters per meter right bending moment right so similarly you are now you should know i mean you should refer exactly this documentation it's very valuable and let's call it if you so if you think to you okay i should go with three two stories 
you just need to do is select uh, this entire frame without the supports, right? Without the supports and replicate it. Replicate it to another story in, uh, so linear, right? Replicate means again, uh, yeah, story, sorry, story. So you need to replicate on the second story. Now we are in first story, so you need to replicate in second story. So you don't need to delete originals, you keep it like that, right? In the SAP, uh, they will give you uh, replicating Z directions directly as well. So you can see they will separate, they have separated in story. This is the replicating Z direction. This is replicating in XY direction. SAP has the same option, right? If you need it, you can even analyze it now, no need to bother. So uh, the first thing is you can even go apply section and check the designs as well, right? So you can give the codes and everything, uh, then start designing and everything, select design combination because I haven't designed, I haven't given any information like, right? So, even for detailing, so this will give you project information as well, everything, right? So I think detailing can be done, right? Let's check, start detailing. It will take some time. Can you see it's giving the drawings as well, right? So this can be even imported if you draw it properly to AutoCAD as well. Drawing sheets, let's say flow frame plans. Can you see? You can even, uh, uh, with these things, you can import it to AutoCAD. This is very useful then, right? Concrete column layout. Let's see from base to ground, then everything, column layout. You know, see at the base, everything is there. You just need to export drawing sheet as an AutoCAD file, right? Even reinforcement, detailing if you uh, think it's not given because I haven't defined anything. So this will give something, right? If you properly done those steps, you can even check those. So problem in plan, labs, everything, everything is there, right? Drawings, sections. So it's very useful, especially. So if you if you need, you can import this project report as well. So once you double click it, so can you see this is the re report? for your analysis, everything is there. Posters and, right, outputs, everything is there. This is very sophisticated software, right? Very useful. And yes, hope you identify these local access, keep the things, right? Frames and shells, these things give the forces in their local, with respect to their local access, right? And the, and the node supports that the supports uh, reactions are given in according to global axis, right? Local is defined according to the element, right? How it's drawn, right? So, so if you remember M, M11 and M22 is different from the, uh, uh, from those of the frame element, right? So keep those things in remember. So you saw F11 and F22, which are, which are, the, which are the directions, right? So uh, thank you very much, right? So I hope you got the basics idea. Thank you.